I was particularly interested in sports, cricket, rugby, and so on, and thought a career along the line managing that type of problem would be of interest to me. And uh, I, I believe that was probably the incentive. It wasn't my chosen career, my chosen career was farming. And I was told that that wouldn't be practical from a financial point of view. Funny enough, I did end up farming 20 years later. So uh, it came through that, through the back door. But I imagine that were, they were my initial movements were through, through experience and contact with Brian, as I mentioned. I don't have any other recollections. I enjoyed the anatomy and physiology component. I enjoyed the, uh, some of the practical classes. The initial pa patient contact was fairly daunting, as I imagine it still is. But I have few other memories of, of the training of note. The highlight of my undergraduate training was probably meeting my future wife, who was also a physiotherapy student. I graduated in 1968 uh, as just an average pass mark. And as I had signed a contract to be bonded to the health department for two years, you are then posted to a region, and I was posted to Nelson, where I served out my time as a general staff physiotherapist, spending perhaps the bulk of the time on the wards and about six months in the gym and pool. And it was in that area, in the gym particularly, where I first met musculoskeletal problems and found my training woefully inadequate to manage them. I was fortunate in that one of the clinics, the outpatient clinic, was run by medical superintendent who was also an orthopedic specialist and he arranged for me and one other to attend a Syriax program in Wellington. I had been exposed to Syriax uh, reading, uh, my own reading, through his textbooks, but I hadn't seen the man in action. And that was an experience. It was uh, to see a chap who could take a clear history and arrive at a diagnosis through the logical application of applied anatomical and physiological principles it was something that opened my eyes to uh, what was possible. Subsequent to that I took a job with Rob McKenzie in Wellington for a year at which time Rob was formulating his ideas on management of the spine. During that year a, a book was published, A Practice of Osteopathic Medicine by Dr. Alan Stoddard, a British osteopath, and I read this book from cover to cover and I said that's what I need to do. Talked about it with Rob and he encouraged me. So I wrote to the school, British School of Osteopathy in London and they said Yes, they, uh, they did accept physiotherapists. They found them difficult to deal with and that they were usually programmed in one way and it wasn't always satisfactory, but if I were that interested, I could come over to London, sit an entry exam with the uh, equivalent students that, I would, that they suggested I enter, which was at the end of their basic science year, which was a year and a half. I sat the exams and passed them and I could enter the program, which I did in 1971. It was at that point that I learnt how to take a history, how to examine a patient, how to clinical, clinically reason, arrive at a diagnosis based upon that reasoning, and plan a subsequent treatment. All features that are now part of the undergraduate program in physiotherapy, but were unheard of in my day. So what I did, 
there's not one would not need to do that today because the, for the reasons I stated it is part of the program but in the late 60s early 70s it was not the only postgrad training available was a short three-month program out of Adelaide run by Jeff Maitland I had inquired about that it was impossible to get on and that there was a huge waiting list so that was behind my uh, my move well one other thing I would state uh, that drove me there is a good friend of mine from high school I went and studied chiropractic at the same time I studied physiotherapy and I would meet with him and we'd talk and he talked about things that I just didn't understand sensible things knowledge of spinal anatomy biomechanics function of both features that were absent from my undergraduate training for whatever reason that was chosen not to teach it I don't know so that's that was behind my move a lack of confidence in what I could offer the public as a practitioner mm -hmm.